Good morning. Today our goal to be investigate two topics, interference and standing waves. We're going to investigate these topics with this simulation. So let's commence operations. What we have in the simulation are four wave generators. These generators are connected to strings or slinkies. Notice that wave generator C and wave generator D, they are connected to the same string. That's very important to note. Now when will interference occur? It'll occur when two or more waves occupy the same space at the same time. Now for this simulation today, the space is the actual string. So when two or more waves occupy the same string at the same time, we're going to see interference. Interference will not be observed for wave generator A or wave generator B because there's only one wave on the string. You need something else to interfere with. So let's see what interference looks like. Here we go. Please focus your attention on wave generator C and wave generator D, as that's where we'll see interference. Right now, there's the interference. And what I'm going to do is slow that down for you. All right, at this point, there still is no interference because the waves aren't overlapping. They're heading towards each other, but they're not overlapping. Here, by the way, we will never see interference. For interference to occur, the two waves have to be on the same string or in the same space. Let's step through this slowly. At that point, there still is no interference. There's no overlapping of the waves. But now look at C and D. It begins to overlap. And that's when we have interference. You could tell they're overlapping by looking at the position of these two waves. And this is really interesting. At this point, there seems to be no wave there. Has the wave just completely disappeared? No, the waves actually pass through each other and continue on their merry way. Let's try that with two waves, see what happens. So now we have two actual waves interfering. And a very interesting pattern emerges. Let's talk more about that pattern. So the first form of interference I specifically want to discuss is destructive interference. It occurs when the resultant wave has a smaller amplitude than either of the two interfering waves. And in this case, the resultant wave, the wave that I have circled here, has an amplitude of exactly zero. Why is that? Well, notice I've circled a trough for wave C and a crest for wave D. Notice that the amplitudes of the two waves are the same. So when you add a trough and a crest and they have the same amplitude, the result is zero. You're adding a negative with a positive, the result is zero. And that's what we see here. The trough cancels out with the crest and the crest cancels out with the trough when the amplitudes are the same. Constructive interference occurs when the resultant wave has a larger amplitude than either of the two interfering waves. And we could see that with this picture here. Notice that we're adding two crests together. When you add a crest and a crest, the result is still a crest. How tall is that crest? Well, if the two waves have the same size amplitude, then it's just double the amplitude of the original wave, twice the size. And that's what we see in this diagram here. If we were to take a ruler and measure that amplitude, that height, it would be double the amplitude of either one of the waves. 
To determine the interference pattern, we add the amplitudes of the individual waves at each point, taking into account if it is positive or negative. And so to summarize, we have constructive interference on the left side and destructive interference on the right side. The idea of adding waves or subtracting waves, this is called formally the principle of superposition. The second part of our discussion will focus on standing waves. They form when two waves traveling in the same medium with identical frequency and amplitude interfere. Today our medium will be the string. Let's see the simulation. Here we go. Focusing our intention on wave C and wave D, we get the pattern here. This is called a standing wave. I'm going to start it again, this time pause through it so we could see it slowly. All right, now I'm going to start to step through it. Notice at this point we get destructive interference. Why is that? Well, here is the position of each wave. Here's one wave. Here's the other wave. And notice, crests and troughs are exactly lining up. Now, would you see these individual two waves? No. All that you would see is the result, which is this line here. You will never see the individual waves. But that's why we're getting this cancellation. If we continue now and step through it, now what's happening? Well, notice, now the two waves, it's not adding a crest and a trough, it's now more or less lining up to form a crest and a crest. And right there, the two crests and the two troughs are overlapping with each other. And so you end up getting a crest of double the amplitude and a trough with double the amplitude. Again, you would not see the two individual waves. All that you would see is this wave here. So that's a standing wave. So you may be wondering, why is it called a standing wave? What exactly is standing about the wave that you just saw? Let's see the simulation again to see what's standing. So you're going to notice that certain points in the medium, in the string, never move. Please take a look at these positions here. These positions, no matter how long you look at the wave for, will never move. Let's take a look. So these parts of the medium that never move, we have a special name for them. They're called nodes. Antinodes are areas in between the nodes. And they're areas where the medium will achieve a maximum amplitude. Let's look at the simulation again. So notice, it doesn't matter how long we look at this simulation, those areas called nodes, the string or the medium will never move. And we'll step through it. And no matter how long we look at these areas here, the nodes, they will never move. Those positions of the medium will not move. The antinodes, being these taller lines here that I've used, these are the areas of maximum motion. And so why do we study standing waves? Well, in any instrument that has a string, standing waves form in the actual string. And so here we have a simulation showing the motion of a string, in this case for a guitar. And notice there is a standing wave. We have two points here, this point and that point that will never move. This first type of pattern of standing wave is called a first harmonic in a stringed instrument. The second harmonic looks like this. Again, notice 
that there seems to be three points that aren't moving. This point here, this point in the middle, and this point here. These are called nodes. This is another pattern of string vibration that forms in a guitar string or in any stringed instrument. This is called the third harmonic. And this time there are four points that aren't moving, four points that are nodes. There's one point, two points, the third point, and the fourth point. Those points are called nodes. There are some wonderful videos on YouTube which actually show standing waves forming in stringed instruments. These videos were recorded in super slow motion and you could actually see the standing wave form in the string instrument. So I showed you a simulation a few moments ago, but you could actually see videos of this happening in real life. In addition, standing waves form in wind instruments. Any type of wind instrument, you have a standing wave. In summary then, today we learned about interference, standing waves, and the application of standing waves in musical instruments. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.